Hello students, welcome back to another geometry video. You know what to do. Pause the video, try these problems in your notes, and then unpause them to do them with me. We are told to use the diagram to find the angle measure. We are given three angles here we are trying to find the measure of, and then we want to classify the angles. So acute, obtuse, right, straight, what are they? So first, we're going to start with angle JHM. So I'm going to find J, J, H, M is over here. Okay, I'm going to use the numbers on the top because that's how I like to do it. So this is 180 over here. Absolute value of 180 minus top number over here this is perfectly in between 30 and 40 so this is 35 so 180 minus 35 absolute value of that is i am 98 percent sure i know what it is yeah it is the absolute value of 145 which absolute value just makes things positive so we have 145 degrees is that acute? Is it obtuse? It's, it's obtuse. Obtuse. Because it's bigger than 90, but less than 180. Okay. Um, new color. MKH. All right, so now... Oh, MHK, excuse me. MHK, all right. So now, we're still at M. But now we're going up here to K. So we are we already know that it's 35 over here. So absolute value. Sorry, absolute value of 35 minus. Over here we're right in between 120 and 130. So this is 125. So one, or excuse me, absolute value of 35 minus 125 is negative 90 and absolute value makes things positive so we have 90 degrees exactly 90 degrees which means this is a right angle beautiful okay last one m h l so now we're starting at M again, popular one, M, H, ooh, L. So now we have 35, we know that M is 35, so absolute value of 35 minus 90. 35 minus 90 is negative 55, and the absolute value of negative 55 is positive 55 degrees. So, what kind of angle is this? Well, 55 is less than 90, so this is an acute, an acute angle, because 55 is less than 90. Ta-da! There you have it! Measuring angles with a protractor and classifying them based on their measure. Okay, that's the first half of 1.5, part of the first half. We're going to move on to the second part of 1.5, the last part of 1.5, still about angles. But now we are going to learn about the angle addition postulate and angle bisectors. Hmm, do you think an angle bisector is like a segment bisector? Think about that, think about that. Okay, so our learning target is that you know what these things are, and the success criteria is that you can use the angle addition postulate and angle bisectors to solve problems. So let's jump right into it. The angle addition postulate Remember our segment addition postulate that said your house is here and the candy store is here. If you've already walked 10 miles to the candy store and you know that it's 15 miles, 
How many more miles do you have left to walk to the candy store? And you said, Mrs. Dodge, of course. 10 plus 5 gives me 15. You would be correct. You would be correct. The angle addition postulate is the exact same, just with angles. So if I know what this angle is, if I know that this angle is 30 degrees, and I know that this angle is 25 degrees, then if I add these together, this entire angle, and let's do that in a different color, if I add these together, the entire angle has to be 30 plus 25, which is 55. So this little chunk plus the other chunk makes up the whole chunk. Just like our segment addition postulate, this chunk plus this chunk equals the whole chunk. So, uh, seg angle addition postulate is just like the segment addition postulate. So, uh, we're going to read it though, give you the words and the symbols and the diagram. Please draw this diagram in your notes. If P, if point P is the interior of angle RST, then the measure of angle RST is equal to the sum of the measures of RSP and PST. So this is like how we said, as long as this point is in between the two endpoints, you can use the segment addition postulate. As long as this, as long as this ray is in between the two rays of your big angle. That's what that means. Okay, and to say it in words is this. The blue angle, which is kind of muddy to see now, but the green angle, the one we've drawn in green, is equal to the red angle plus the yellow angle. That's it. That's it. And if you're still a little confused, no worries. Maybe seeing an example will help. So in this example, we are asked to find the measure. And remember, that's what the little M means. This means measure of angle LMN. So where is LMN? Well, LMN. That's the big angle out here. They want us to find that whole angle. Well, I know part of it is 85 and part of it is 23. So the measure of angle LMN must be equal to 85 degrees plus 23 degrees, which is 108. Yes. Wait. Yes, 108 degrees. Ta-da! Not so bad, not so bad. So let's crank up the difficulty just a little bit, shall we? Now we have some variables. We have some x's uh, in place. And now we are told that the measure of LKN... So L, K, N, we are told that this whole angle is 145 degrees. And we want to find the measure of L, K, M and M, K, N. Okay, I know what you're thinking. There, what is probably what you're thinking. What? Because I know what this whole angle is, but otherwise I just have these X's. What do you want me to do with these X's? Well, forget about the X's for a second and remember what the angle addition postulate tells us. It tells us that this little chunk plus this little chunk has to equal the whole thing. So, that means that this... 2x plus 10 plus 4x minus 3, those together, added together, has to be equal to 145 degrees. And hey, now we can, we can find an x in here. But wait a minute, why would we find x? We're trying to find the measure of angle LKM 
and the angle, the measure of angle MKN. Will the measure of angle LKM, LKM is here, and I know the measure of it. The measure of angle LKM is 2x plus 10. Oh! So in order to know what this is, I need to plug x back into that. Okay, okay. So let's solve this for x, then we can put x into this, and we can figure out what LKM is. And I think we can do the same thing with angle MKN as well. Okay, so 2x, let's see, I can combine my apples and oranges. So I can put the four x's together and I can put, or excuse me, I can put the x's together and the numbers together. So two plus four is six x, and 10 minus three is seven. All of that is still equal to 145. And now I'm gonna solve for x, so I'm gonna get rid of the seven on both sides. 6x equals 145 minus 7 is 138. And dividing by 6 on both sides gives me that x is equal to 23. Am I done? What was the problem asking me to do? It asked me to find the measure of LKM and MKN. So, or excuse me, LKM, MKN. Yeah, that's a little, little confusing, but we got it, we got it. So we know uh, that the measure of LKM, this red angle, is 2x plus 10. So remember, I'm just going to take my x and I'm going to put it in there. 2 times 23 plus 10. Uh, 2 times 23 plus 10. This is 46 plus 10, which is 56. 56 degrees. And that makes sense because I can check my answer by looking. This angle is acute. It's definitely acute. And 56 is less than 90. So that, that's a reasonable answer. If we had got something like a hundred and, and, uh, 157, we'd be like, wait a minute, this is obtuse and this is not obtuse. So we would have known that we did something wrong. Okay, beautiful. We found LKM, but now let's switch colors and let's look at the measure of MKN. So MKN is here, and that is 4x minus 3. So again, let's plug the x back into it, and we have 4 times 23 minus 3. 4 times 23 is 92 minus 3, which is 89. 89. Ooh, that is really close to a right angle. And yeah, if I look at this blue angle right here, this looks like it's almost 90 degrees. So 89 makes perfect sense. Ta-da! Beautiful. Okay, we can check and make sure that we were right. Solve for x is 23, and plug it back in, and we get 56 and 89. Boom, we were right. Okay, so now you know all about the angle addition postulate. Now it's time to talk about angle bisectors. What was a segment bisector? Well, a segment bisector cut a segment perfectly in half. A angle bisector does the same thing. Any bisector Remember, to bisect something means to cut it in half. So anytime you have a bisector, it's cutting something in half. So what this says is that an angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. 
What did it mean for two angles to be congruent? They have the same measure. So if this is 35 degrees, that means this has to be 35 degrees. And if this is 15 degrees, it means this has to be 15 degrees. Okay, so in this figure, in the picture, uh, YW, ray YW, this red one right here, bisects the blue angle. So that means that X, Y, W, and Z, Y, W are the same. So because this uh, red ray right here is a bisector, it means that whatever this top angle is, the bottom angle will also be. Because a bisector cuts things perfectly in half. We are going to keep talking about bisectors. We're going to keep talking about bisectors for a long time, for, for the rest of the year. So please, please, please remember that a bisector cuts things in half. This is super important. This is very important. Put stars around it in your notes. Save it in your brain. Bisect means to cut in half. Hearts and stars around it. It's important. It is important. Okay, so now you know that an angle bisector cuts angles into two congruent pieces, two angles that are the same. So let's see an example. Okay. Oh no, they didn't give us a picture. Fear not. We will make our own picture. So, um, ray QS bisects angle PQR. So I'm going to draw... P, Q, R, something like this. So, P can be up here. I know Q is here because the vertex is always in the middle when we name angles. So, P, Q, R. Beautiful. Now, I'll draw my bisector in red. Q, S bisects this. So, I need a line. My ray needs to... Ah, that's good. It's, it needs to be perfectly in between the, uh, each of these lines. So this is QS, so this will be point S. And now remember, because, because QS is a bisector, it means that this angle and this angle are the same. And remember, that's what these tick marks mean, the little womps, womps, semicircles. It means that they are the same. Just like we had our segment tick marks, those tick marks meant that the segments were congruent. These tick marks mean that the angles are congruent. Okay. All right, so now we can read the rest of the question. The measure of PQS is 24. PQS... So this angle is 24 degrees. Find the measure of angle PQR. PQR. Oh, so it gave us half of the angle. We need to find the whole angle. Interesting. Well, if this angle is 24, I know that this angle is 24. And if I want to find the whole angle, well, one chunk plus the other chunk is the whole chunk. So the whole angle is 24 plus 24, which is 48. So our final answer, the measure of angle PQR is 48 degrees. So make sure when you're doing these problems that you read the question very carefully. All of this stuff, they told us. And this is what we're trying to do. So you have to use what they tell you. And if they tell you something, it means that you need to use it. So use what they tell you to find what they're asking you to do in the end. So we used every single one of these pieces of information we used to help us find 
the measure of angle PQR. Now let's check and make sure that we were correct. 48, 24, 24, angle addition postulate. Look at that. That's what we did too. Nice. Okay. Um, questions. Questions are good. Questions are good. So, if you have questions, please ask them. Ask your teacher, ask your friend, comment on this YouTube video, whatever you'd like, but please, please ask questions. These, there are a lot of problems here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to hide my face so that you can uh, screenshot all of those. Or not screenshot, but you know, pause the video if you'd like to. Remember that these problems might be different than the problems that your teacher assigns. So, make sure you do the problems your teacher assigns. Uh, these problems, there's not as many of them as it looks like, uh, but because the pictures are so big, they take up a lot of space. So this is only 10 problems right here. They just take up a lot of space. And there are more problems <laughs> that wouldn't fit on the last page. Uh, but all of these, you can see, this is like example 4. Uh, all of these, all of these on this page are like example 4. And all of these on this page are like example 5. So if you want to practice example 4, do these problems. You want to practice example 5. You can do these problems, but make sure that you're doing the homework that your teacher assigns. Okay, and per the usual, we will end uh, this video with a launch. And this one comes from Albert Einstein. Pretty smart guy. Take his, I'd take his advice. He says, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Now, why is it important to keep your balance? Well, when you're riding a bike and you lose your balance, you fall and you hurt yourself. And depending upon how fast you are going, uh, you can hurt yourself pretty bad. Uh, I have a friend who broke his leg and several ribs uh, going too fast on his bicycle. So, to keep your balance, you must keep moving. This is the emphasis of it. The point of this is not to say don't go through life too fast, although that is another launch we could talk about. But in order to keep your balance, you must keep moving. So in life, when you keep moving, it means that you don't keep looking in the past. Oh gosh, I really, really screwed up my math test in algebra. Or I, I almost failed algebra. Like, okay. Maybe you almost did, but you didn't, so stop focusing on it. Maybe you did fail algebra. That's okay. Keep moving. Try algebra again. Pass algebra again. And this applies to other things too. Maybe you said something really rude to a friend and now that friend doesn't talk to you anymore. Keep moving. And that's not to say that you can't be sad. You can be sad about the friendship you lost. You can be sad about failing algebra. You can be sad about whatever happened in the past. But keep moving. Focus on your future, too. Don't let the past, don't let that friend that you're not friends with anymore scare you from having friends in the future. Don't let failing algebra paralyze you from taking it again. So keep moving. Keep moving. And don't get scared by the future, too. When I was a senior in high school, I was so scared of, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Where do, do I need to go to college? Am I going to college? What college am I going to? I was so scared. But I had to keep moving. If I hadn't have gone to college, I wouldn't be here teaching all of you. So you have to keep moving. Whether you're looking at the past or you're scared of the future, in order to keep your balance and to not fall off the bicycle of life, you must keep moving. That is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.